hello everyone and thank you for taking the time to check out my show here today i've got josh ross from the blackheart saints on and this is a newer band that has had a couple songs on rock radio and i really like them uh, in fact i even like their older songs that were not on the radio but this band has actually been at it for quite a while so i think their success is well deserved um, they played shows with everyone from seven dust and puddle of mud to slash and la guns and I think the future is really bright for these guys. I think they're very talented musicians and songwriters, but they also seem to be really smart about the business side of things, like marketing a beer for the band and things like that. So it was a lot of fun chatting with Josh, and I hope to see this band live very soon. Welcome, Josh Ross, to the Chuck Shoot Podcast. How you doing, Josh? Doing good. How about yourself? Great, great. So Blackheart Saints is the, the band that you're in, but let's hear your whole story, like how we got to this point, because you've made some amazing music, but I want to know how you got there. You started, this, the story starts in, was it Lake Charles, Louisiana? That's where you're from? That's correct, yeah. Lake yeah, Charles, Louisiana. and you grew up in a rock and roll family. Your dad was like an old school rocker. Was he in bands? Yeah, man. So uh, my dad was also trying to do the same thing and chase the dream and uh I mean, he grew up in the in gospel, and uh, he was in the church choir and stuff, and then he ended up becoming some rock and roller, man, and uh, just a small-town boy with a big voice, you know? So uh, he was in a band called Kingdom, and they did a lot of traveling uh, back in the 70s and 80s and stuff, so okay. yeah, man. Nice. All right, so what is he, is he still doing uh, music now, or does he do something else? Uh, so my dad passed away. Actually, tomorrow will be the anniversary, his two-year anniversary of, of passing away. Uh, with uh, liver cancer so oh. uh of course he ain't doing anything anymore but uh yeah. but he, yeah man he, he was a life dude he uh i mean he was taking me to the bars when i was you know 15 years old if not younger and wrapping cables and uh and he just did it his whole life that's all i know you know uh every weekend he was in a in the local bar you know playing a show so wow what an inspiration yeah, well i think you're doing him proud with with what you've done so far it's amazing Appreciate that, man. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So you grew up, um, and also you said your mom, I think I heard you say your mom was kind of more into soul music, but you were a big GNR fan. Same as me. I'm a huge GNR fan. What other influences did you have growing up? Because you've drawn uh, comparisons to Miles Kennedy and Chris Cornell. And that's pretty crazy to uh, to hear, but uh, <laughs> those guys are like gods to me. Um, yeah, man. I mean, you know, my two brothers were into the 90s stuff, and uh, I mean, between everything from Soundgarden, Pearl Jam, all the way to my dad, uh, which was Black Sabbath, uh, Led Zeppelin, um, you know, some Motley Crue, Aerosmith. Yeah. Uh, Mom was into, you know, Sam Cooke and Marvin Gaye. And um, so, you know, I got a good taste of, of kind of, you know, all over the, the spectrum, you know, just being the youngest of the family, you know, just kind of consumed everybody's taste. Okay. You know? So then when you, yeah. uh, you, I heard you say your favorite movie's rock star with Mark Wahlberg. Was that what made you want to be like a rock star seeing that movie? Yeah, man. Of course. Man. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. I mean, dude, the rock star was, was, I mean, it's, man, it's a cult classic. It's great. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's everything you want to inspire to be just a crazy nights, the awesome shows, uh, women lined up down the hotel hallway, <laughs> all the good stuff, man, you know, um, yeah, like I said, my dad was it was from that kind of era. So, you know, it was it just meant a lot to me to see something so cool, uh, this bigger than life attitude, you know, and uh and people just kind of, you know, falling in love with that, you know. Yeah. It's just really cool to I think, you know, I should have been back in, in that era. I feel like that that was kind of like my time. I wish I could just go back and be born. <laughs> well, you that know, you can bring it back. And 80s. Yeah, yeah, you can bring that era back because there's still a lot of people that love, like myself, that love that kind of music. So I think that's awesome. So what age did you start like playing the guitar and singing and doing all that stuff? Uh, my brother was a guitar player. So, you know, I mean, since we were kids, uh, I mean, before I found my voice, that's kind of, you know, I was, I was trying to pick up instruments. Uh, my dad was a... He started off being a drummer, and um, hmm. that's how he kind of got picked up from his band because he was going out to the park and setting up his drum set and just bashing his set out there in the park. And these young guys saw him and uh, picked him up. So my dad gave me my first drum set, and I was probably about 14 years old, you know. So picked that up a little bit, and I think that kind of laid the foundation to uh, kind of keep going, you know, which was great because, I mean, obviously getting the drums down, you get the, the rhythm the foundation of a, of every song, you know, is a, is a good beat. So, so you can play drums, guitar, and sing. 
I mean, to some degree, yeah. You know, that's I mean, awesome. I haven't played drums since since I was a kid, so you know, I mean, I'm I'm definitely a little rusty there, but uh, that's kind of where I started. You know, just kind of followed, weird enough, the same footsteps that my dad kind of did. Okay. So, uh, so I picked up the guitar, man, probably shortly after, sixteen. Oh, okay. And, uh, and played and played acoustic, probably you know every every day, you know, just you know, with, with some friends of mine back in uh, Lake Charles, and uh, like I said, I didn't break out of my shell until probably about 20 years old so uh i had a lot of years to kind of build up uh you know some kind of uh you know foundation for me right. to be, to be who, who i am today yeah know? so so you had some other bands be- before blackheart saints there was a band called parallel the sky tell me about that one yeah man that's uh that's the first rock and roll band of josh ross right there man. okay <laughs> what kind of music uh, was right that now, um man i I guess it would be a. Uh, I mean, the guys I was in the band with were, were um, you know, into into like a three doors down. Kind okay, of style. that kind of stuff. So yeah, yeah. So I guess more you know southern rock still, but um, something a little bit more melodic, I guess. Okay. So uh, and like I said, and, you know, we're all young, man. So we're you know it's definitely trying to find our sound. So I don't think we really had enough time to really figure out what that was. Um, but it definitely, definitely was a good way to get you know introduced into. Uh, the bar scene and getting, you know, comfortable with, uh, being a front man, which, you know, I mean, I, I still feel like I'm, I'm trying to figure that out, you know? So, um, but yeah, that was in 2008. Was, so you've been doing this stuff for 13 years. Yeah, man. That's crazy. <laughs> so when did you do, yeah. uh, so you were in that band and then you were in some other band called, uh, RW. Um, so yeah, so which actually that was the beginning of what Black Heart Saints is today. Okay. So, um, uh, once I actually moved from Lake Charles and I moved to, uh, Baton Rouge, um, before moving out to Texas and that's where we kind of found, started the whole Black Heart Saints thing. So going yeah. from Parallel to Sky to Lafayette, um, it was just the, the band that was with Parallel to Sky was kind of, uh, everyone was going their separate ways and stuff. And, um, you know, and we just kind of, we just lost ground. So, um i went on to my next chapter which was moving out to baton rouge found a, a job i actually got started with the cover band that uh my brother was in uh who i grew up watching as well so uh they need a new singer so i just kind of packed up my bags and moved out there and started playing rock and roll with them every weekend just doing the cover gig deal and um and then i had the opportunity to move out to austin texas for a job and uh and oh. i already knew that i want to kind of chase the dream yeah you know? that's uh, smart in, in austin texas so yeah so and, and what you're talking about R, uh, rw is revolution wild which is this beginning okay. phase of what black heart saints is me and mark the guitar player from black heart saints we actually were starting that group first and uh and we were just trying to find ourselves again, okay you know? we were trying to find a name trying to figure out who's the musicians we all you know i mean me and mark both moved to austin to try to become you know rock and rollers so you guys um, moved together because and tell me how you met mark you found him in like an ad was this in like a newspaper or craigslist or how what where what website did you use or source to find him so like so so i'm from small town and and mark is as well he's from uh, fort wayne indiana so he moved down actually a couple months before i did okay um so and, and i think he actually came down with with a band or or maybe the singer that he was with at the at the time and um so yeah, so uh, you know we we both moved there. I didn't know how else to try to find a band, and it took me about a year to kind of get grounded and stuff. Um, but once I kind of got my year in Austin, it kind of got grounded. Kind of had a little, uh, you know, money to kind of be comfortable and stuff like that. To kind of okay, now I can start looking for, you know, my musicians again. You know, um, I didn't know any other way of doing it besides doing a, a like an old paper ad. You know, kind of like what my dad and them was doing back in the huh. day. It's like, hey, you know, I want to get on, on Microsoft Word and type up something. Here's a picture. And I went around and I just posted up at like workshops and, and uh, like music shops and, and uh, practice huh. spaces and stuff like that. That's so, yeah, fascinating. Man, and, so you actually just use an old school piece of paper and put it up like a flyer. Yeah, man. I went That's to awesome. School method. <laughs> I love <laughs> it. And so that I was like, what, like 2014 or so? Uh, yeah, That would probably be um 2000 and probably 13 13 so okay a, a year before that like i said because we started the rw okay and um and like i said and we tried to get that going and it just wasn't lining up with, with okay. the guys we just couldn't I, find it we couldn't agree on the sound or okay like that. so then we kind of took it some time off 
and then me and Mark kind of regathered, and then we created Black Heart Saints. Okay, and then you, so Black Heart Saints, you create this band. Now, who does the songwriting? Is it mostly you? Is it you and Mark together, or is it the whole band? Do the, do the does the bass player and the drummer help out with that too, or is it? Uh, I mean, it's definitely a, a, a process with any songwriting. I, I think a lot of people probably would agree with that. Um, you know, me and Mark, we always wrote together. I mean, and like I said, we've been through a couple uh, lineup changes and mm-hmm. stuff. So uh, this method actually just works out great for us. And, and, you know, I get inspired by whatever riffs Mark's coming up with. And, um, and, and we take it to one point, And then when we get to there, we bring it to the rest of the guys. And we just kind of chip away at it. And, uh, and and build that song to be kind of what we envision. And then uh, we just take that to the producer and, and we get hammering on it even more. And uh, I think it's a, I think it's a whole team process, okay. to be honest. Yeah, because yeah. I love, um, you know, I heard your, obviously I heard the first song, Misery. I think that was the song that I that I first heard and that's when I reached out to have you on the show. That was like a, a almost like a year ago, I feel like. But yeah, I went man. back today yeah. and I, I listened to some of your older stuff. Uh, like one last thrill and gasoline. These are really fast, like catchy tunes. Alive is a great rock and song. It's got a mean riff and this sick guitar solo. And then um, crazy. I love how so many of your songs have this like fast pace, like an up tempo. I'm guessing that's really fun to play live, right? Yeah, man. And that kind of goes back to uh, what we're saying about being inspired by by Guns N' Roses. You mm. know, what I mean. Uh, you know, uh, appetite for destruction. I mean, from, from top to bottom, I mean, it was just, uh, it was one hit after another, you know, yeah. and, um, and, you know, and, and everything kind of based it off that drive and, and, you know, uh, there's plenty of stuff to be angry about these days. So, yeah. uh, we're, we're transferring that throughout the rock and roll, man. And somebody, I mean, we, people need something to, to relieve that in some kind of way, you know, and, and I think music kind of helps people get through all kinds of stuff, you know, uh, depending on your mood, you're going to listen to a certain type of music. So, Absolutely. So uh, yeah, like with the song quicksand though, cause that's actually one of the few slower songs that you do, which is also a great tune. What inspired that one? What is that about? Uh, quicksand, um, man, you know, sometimes the basic songs are some of the, the, the greatest, the greatest ones. And, um, quicksand kind of got written, I guess when I was writing it, I didn't know the message behind it, you know? Um, and I think more as I, as I listen to it, I go over it. Uh, it just strikes more how much it, it just means to me, you know, in my life. And uh, quick saying, it's just, you know, being handed a life uh, that you weren't expected, you know, hmm. and you just got to overcome that. You know, you overcome that that, that quick saying, uh, you know, we don't get to choose how, you know, what how we're born, you know, how, mm-hmm. how we come into this life. So, uh you know, I think a lot of us go through a lot of hardship. You know, I got I, I come from a, a rough background, so uh, I've seen a lot of things at a young age I should have seen. So there's been a lot of quicksand uh, that I've been trying to hammer out. You know, Wait, so what are? Of, tell me about that. What is the stuff that you saw at a young age that you shouldn't have seen? Um, man, I mean, you could go back to uh, I mean, drug abuse, uh, abusiveness. Uh, you know, I mean, it's dark, dark things, it's stuff you see in the movies, you know what I'm saying? Uh, like in your family yeah, life or your friends or, or just, yeah, uh, uh, all of it, man. Uh, like I said, I, we come, I come from a small town. There's not much, you know, else to do. A lot of people get lost, you know, mm. in, in drug abuse. Uh, you know, not, not a lot of people, but you know what I'm saying? Uh, you're, you're handed the, the life that that's granted to you. So you take that and you make it something better. And, and like I said, I mean, from, uh, my mom being a, a, a single, uh, you know, a single mother trying to raise three kids, uh, you know, going through boyfriends, uh, uh, watching those abusive men take it out on the family. You know what I'm saying? Uh, just finding or everyone having to try to find their way through our life. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, like I said, no one's perfect. You know, I think we all got problems. Yeah. And uh, even within our families and within our surroundings and uh those are the things that, that help, help me become a musician I'm today. That's, that's what mm-hmm. inspires my songs, you know, okay. writing. Uh, it's almost like a, a, a way to, to release that, you know, yeah. to, you know, yeah, so and you're... Like said, within, within the songs, there's a lot of metaphors, you know what I'm saying? Sure. How, how I like to write. I like, I like someone to maybe take a song. What it means to me may mean something different to Absolutely, you. Absolutely. Yeah. If it helps you, then great. Right. That's awesome. No. And I, and I love, so I think, is it misery? That's the song. Obviously that one's on the radio that's on the charts. And then it was lines. That's the other one that's also charted on uh, the rock radio. Right. 
Yeah, absolutely. How do you get to that point where, because the other album that I listened to, uh, I think the album was called Alive. And like I said, all those songs I mentioned earlier are so great. How come those ones are not on the radio and then these ones are? I mean, they're all great songs. Is it a push to try to get your songs played on the radio so that you can get them on the, you know, the billboard mainstream charts or whatever? Like that's got to be hard to do that, right? How do you do that? For sure. Um, yeah, man. And, and, and like I said, I think we kind of waited for the uh, the right moment to maybe start pushing stuff too. Like I said, with anything new, uh, you got to work out the kinks, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And uh, same as with the lineup and members and finding the guys with the same vision, the same attitude and the same wants. Um, like I said, so when we first started, we're figuring out our sound. And um, I think right now is just a good prime time for us where me and Mark have put a lot of time in together. We know each other. We, you know, uh, you know, I know what side he sleeps on. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, we know each other. Wow. So uh, that comes throughout the music. It comes without the, the writing process of like, okay, I know where your riff is going or you know where my vocal is going. So you, we, shift, we switch and shift. So I think with the Misery album was just a good album where we start to go, Man, you know, we're really onto something. We're really starting to found find that that Black Heart Saints sound. You know okay. what I'm saying? Like this yeah. is the director we're going. So, um, and again, I mean, it takes money to make money, the whole game and, and everything like that. So uh when we start investing, you know, like we're doing this all ourselves. You know, it's in house, yeah. independent. Yeah, didn't and, you guys um, buy a um you got you you bought your own van? You called it the Saint Station. And you got, you're pulling this trailer in the van. Now, do you sleep in the van or is that just to, to pull the stuff and then you guys get a hotel or, or what's that like traveling with a band in a van? That's, I mean, you see these bands, the bigger bands get the huge tour buses. Some of them have their own tour. Like I think Vince Neil gets his own tour bus, you know, from Molly. <laughs> like, so what is it like four guys in this tiny van? I mean, do you, you kill each other? Do you drive each other nuts? I'm sure we would all love our own personalized. <laughs> all right. We'll get by there. By the end of it, for yes. sure, right? <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, it's, dude, it's, uh, like I said, you learn, you, you guys, you learn them uh, yeah. really well. And uh, Ian, he's he's a favorite one out of the band, you know, because he's, uh, he's, he's a lover, you know what I'm saying? So he likes to talk. He wants to get to know you. He wants to hug, shake hands, you know, and, and tell you his life story. Uh, so you can imagine hearing that story for <laughs> two weeks straight inside of the van. <laughs> now, did you, and also, didn't someone steal the trailer? Did you guys get that back? We haven't got it back yet, man. Um, you and know, it had all your stuff in it, or was it empty? Uh, it was empty. Like, so okay. we, we, that's one thing that we, you know, we always try to cross, cross our T's, dot our I's, all that yeah. good stuff. And, uh, you know, we've, we've been a band for, what, over six years now, or, mm-hmm. or close to a little bit over six or something. Um, We've been very fortunate, man. I mean, we traveled throughout yeah. the nation, and and uh, we've been pretty aware of our surroundings and stuff. Uh, it's just funny enough, man. We we had everything emptied in the trailer. It was in the house. Um, I was just about to uh, to move, so everything was packed up. We left the, the trailer at the house over the Christmas break while we all go and see our family. And uh, sure enough, during the Christmas break, some someone decided <sighs> that there was a trailer up for grabs. That uh, sucks, man. So yeah, man. You know, and like I've been having the trailer since you know Parallel the Sky. It's it's been something that's been around for. uh, If anything, it's just the memories because Mm. I just know where that trailer's been, Mm. and uh, in in the in in in, it's kind of part of my life. You know. Yeah. Well, let's talk about where that trailer's been. So I think one of the was one of the big uh, the the biggest first shows that you did was South by Southwest. Were you guys on the side stage or? Tell me about South by Southwest. I've never been there because. I look at the flight prices and the hotel prices to Austin during that time. And it's like through the, not to mention the price for the ticket to the, to actually go to the event. So, but tell me what it's like to play that. Do you get like a free pass to go to all the other stuff too then? Or. Yeah. So, um, well, the first year that we played, we were just, uh, it was just our debut show, which is really cool because obviously, you know, it was our backyard Mm -hmm. and, uh, we were a new band on the scene and everyone wants to play South by Southwest. You know I mean? We've got bands from all over the world coming over. Um, you know, I mean, the first, of, let's see, we've done it. I mean, we've done it ever since we've been in a band. So um, there might have been one year where we took off, but we didn't become official artists until the past two years. Oh. So we were doing a lot of just, doing a lot of street shows, doing a lot of the smaller venues. And, okay. Because uh, did, you know, like did I see a show that you did in 2012, just you solo? Were you just like on the street at South by Southwest? And you're like, 
just trying to get close? Yeah, uh, I mean, we definitely done that for sure, for sure. Uh, but I've been, I played acoustic and, and did the cover stuff yeah. uh, on Sixth Street. I had like about, um, I had three residencies that I was doing. Oh. Um, this is before Black Heart Saints was kind of was even really becoming a, a thing. We were yeah, just right. Up the yeah, yeah. Again. Uh, so, but yeah, man, I was doing that for about a year straight, man. So when oh. South Park came around, I had a lot of connections and stuff. Okay. And filling up slots man and just trying to get seen and so then and so then after south by southwest i think you guys played with filter was that the first big band that you had pl done a show with that was yep yeah, for uh for black heart saints and it was so, okay uh, was that pretty yeah, memorable like that, was that exciting you're like oh, we're playing with filter i mean were you fans of Filter? i like filter yeah, I, mean, I like Filter too. Uh, I mean, it was a memorable show. I, I think he uh, he started to have some some gremlins in his little uh, guitar pedal board, uh, uh -oh. and he just decided to pick it up and throw it off the stage. So what? It was memorable. <laughs> it was definitely memorable. So, he threw his uh, guitar pedal off the stage. Yeah, he was he was not having it. And uh -oh. man, he's a rock star, I guess. Uh, <laughs> he can do what he wants. Okay. But, uh, I would I wouldn't be throwing stuff off the stage. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it, they did a great show nonetheless and it was just it was just funny it was just like yeah. it was our first big show to play with somebody and we're like yes this is the way to do it that's this is funny roll, yeah <laughs> so that's cool now you've done multiple shows with dangerous <laughs> toys um and have you met jason mcmaster like have you actually have you ever worked with him because he's such a talented musician you know he's, some of his other bands broken teeth and stuff and he's got so much experience in the business i'd love to see some sort of collaboration between you two yeah, man, he's like uh like Texas royalty, you know, definitely for 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 Texas rock and roll, man. Yeah. That's, he's, he's the man. And we we definitely had a uh, a couple of run-ins, you know, we opened up for um, you know, Broken Teeth and stuff uh, as well in Dangerous Toys. So we we get a chance mm. to kind of uh say hey real quick and stuff. We haven't really had a full conversation and everything, but you know, I completely respect him as as a front man, a singer and and I think he had what one of the top 50 rock albums of, of all time or something up there with Skid Row and all them guys. So he's definitely uh someone that that we look up to and and uh, inspired to be definitely, you know, a guy. He's right in our backyard, man. He's 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 the man, you know. Yeah. So uh you know, like I said we all we want to do is just be able to to carry the torch. So if those guys are happy enough to pass it down to us, man, we're we're ready to grab and, and, and do what we can. You know? Yeah, I, I went and saw them in Colorado. We drove because they don't they don't do that many shows and I live in Phoenix and I drove out to see them. And I was just impressed at how the musicianship, like the guitar uh Scott, I think is a guitar player, Scott uh yep. Dal Dalivar, I'm not sure how to say his like he was insane. <laughs> he was just lighting it up. I mean, it was crazy how good they still sounded. After all these years, I was really impressed. So it's never, fun. never skip the beat, man. Them guys, no. them guys are rock and roll, man. Yeah. So then and, you've uh, done so many shows with, I mean, which ones stand out to you? Like you've played with the Winery Dogs, Kings X, Puddle of Mud, uh, Skillet, Pod, Coed and Cambria, Cambria, uh, Jackal, Dawkin. I mean, do are any of those like really memorable for you, or do you just start to kind of be part of the uh, part of the business where you're just like, oh, it's another big band tonight. Yeah, man, I think uh, Winery Dogs is definitely one of our one of our favorite shows to kind of just be part of. Um, getting to talk to uh, you know them guys behind stage and uh, just super down to earth, man, and and uh, and super talented musicians. I mean, it was just something that we were kind of as musicians being inspired by musicians. We we're just yeah, like, oh, right. You know, like these guys are like, how do you get so good? You know, um, you know, years obviously. You know, yeah. music and, and, and putting in the work, man. Uh, but that was, yeah, that's probably one of our favorite ones, man. I mean, we love Kings X too. Uh, Doug Pinnock, man, we got to uh, run into him a couple of times, and uh, even out there in LA um, at the Nam show and stuff. And uh, always a great person to kind of get to meet and and, uh, and talk to. You know, it's good when you can meet some of those rock idols that uh, that really you know uh, embrace you and bring you in. Yeah. So you did a show in 2018 with the Dead Daisies. I just had John Karabi on. And I think Dizzy Reed was at this show too. Did you get to interact with John Karabi or Dizzy Reed at all? I know I saw a picture of you with a uh, Dean Castronovo, who's also very yeah, famous. yeah, man. We got to. Uh, I mean, like I said, it's always so quick, man. You know, doing oh, it's the quick. Show, okay. Guys kind of show yeah. up. Yeah, they usually just show up right before. Uh, you know, they're about to hit the stage and everything, and, and you know, who's to blame them? Uh, for how how well known all them guys are legendary guys yeah uh but you know like i said they're, they're always super nice man i mean I, I don't have any bad experiences of uh 
definitely, day, you know, dead days is running to any of them guys, you know, uh, and talking to Dean back, you know, in the parking lot, it was probably the, the best conversations that we had. It was with me and my drummer, Nate, and, uh, and they were just drumming off, you know, just drum nerd, nerding off with each other. So it was pretty, it was, it was <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. cool. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. It was cool. And then Buck Cherry and Blacktop Mojo, you did a show with that? Did you? I would assume yeah, you man. you get to probably interact with Blacktop Mojo a little bit more because they're, they're yeah yeah I I had him uh, Matt on the show he was really fun. Yeah, Matt's great man. Them guys are uh, I mean that's that's our Texas homies. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we done a couple shows with them man. We got to hang out on on the tour bus with them and and you know drink too much whiskey and uh, talk about the good times, the bad times, and uh and you know helping each other in, in the industry man. And it's it's kind of good to come across uh guys like that who uh are willing to uh again it's 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 about embracing each other and, and helping bring each other up and uh and them guys are a prime example of, of doing that i mean yeah. they, you know they're all about helping and giving advice that they can and uh and they know we're in the, we're in the same uh we're in this for the same reasons you know mm-hmm, what I'm saying? this mm-hmm. is a, this is what we this is who we are this is yeah. all we know uh so it's good to be able to kind of have that teamwork in that right hood uh, so yeah, man, for sure. Guys are great, man. That's great. So, and then slash that had to be one of the best shows that you just to, to be able to perform with that guy. I mean, even if I'm guessing maybe it was a similar kind of thing where you just had a real brief interaction with him, but Sla- slash and miles Kennedy, both those guys are legends. I mean, did you, you have yeah, anything man. remember about that show? Uh, I mean, I think the best thing I can remember is, uh, well, there's two things. There's, uh, the first one, which is slash's road case with all his guitars that says, uh touch and i'll break your hand you know what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's, that's funny gold. and then the next thing is probably when they were loading out and you know everyone's kind of gathered at, you know in the back and stuff and, and we're trying to load out as well with everybody uh i think there's some girl that we had with us and uh well she saw slash come walk by and she goes to grab and say hey slash and the security guy just comes in and just just takes her out of the way and uh i'm like well, that's that's you know that's rock and roll royalty right there. You can't touch, <laughs> that's you can't yeah. Touch you the, got the, you the, can't the just goose. You know? Yeah, no, that reminds me. Uh, one time, my <laughs> my nephew was here in Arizona, and uh, they were at the mall, and they saw Mike Tyson, and he's just a little kid. And he's like, "Hey, Mike!" And then he you know went to run to to go say hello, and then his security guards did like the formation or something and got in front of him, <laughs> and it's like, yeah, you can't just like approach some of these guys like. You know, because they probably yeah. get a lot of weirdos and like uh, people that want to hurt them. So it's, their security yeah, doesn't imagine. know. So cool. And then you did a show with Steel Panther. That's one of my yeah. favorite bands personally. I mean, have you seen them perform a lot? Because I've seen them like 20 times and every time it's different. Yeah, man. Uh, I watched a couple live shows, you know, from YouTube and stuff. Um, and we knew what we were expecting for sure. We definitely watched them the music videos and they're very tasteful. Uh so, which was probably one of her best shows in, in Austin, man. I mean, that that was a pretty much a almost a sold out show. If it wasn't a sold out, it was probably about fourteen hundred people, uh, wow. in, in one big room, man. And it was, you know, right in our backyard again. Dude, just like that's, it was just very humbling to, uh, you know, because there's so much music in Austin, and uh, I mean, it's hard to kind of intrigue that many people in a music capital, uh, yeah, to come to one show. So it was really cool to see them guys like even how extreme they are in, uh, you know, to be able to pull that many people in Austin. And it was, I mean, dude, it was rock and roll. That's awesome. awesome. So do you have any shows lined up for the summer or what are your thoughts on doing shows right now? Cause do you think that people, are you worried if you perform that people might judge you? Like, why are you performing? It's not safe. Cause I'm seeing shows rescheduled for 2022, which seems to me yeah. a little bit extreme. I, I'm seeing other shows going on like right now. So I don't know. What are your thoughts yeah. on this whole thing? Are you going to do shows? Are you guys rescheduling them or? Yeah, man. Uh, I mean, it's been something that, I mean, me personally, I've been hammering out, um, you know, because there's so much, you know, controversy over, uh, you know, trying to put any kind of event together. So, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, the last thing we want is just, you know, some bad, some bad press on us thinking that we're trying to, to do harm to people. And all we're trying to do is bring enjoyment and laughter and love and rock and roll and all the other, you know, stuff that goes with it um so yeah i mean you know i, I kind of told my band i was like you know let's let's definitely just be very um let's just think everything through you know what i'm saying let's just mm-hmm. see what's what what is out there let's not get in a rush to do anything um and the same thing it's like you kind of book some stuff and then it gets pushed back and then it gets pushed back some more it gets pushed mm. back and let's just wait let's just wait till the time's right because there's so much more that 
that we need to be doing anyways, you know? And like I said, I'd rather be doing stuff that's going to build us up uh, and make us ready for when it is right time to go. Uh, You're very patient. Do- You're very patient. You're looking forward, which I like that. That's smart. You're not thinking short term. Let's do shows right now. You're thinking, well, let's, let's just be patient and wait, which I think in a way is very smart. So you don't have anything lined up right now. Well, we do. We definitely got some stuff lined up. And, and like I said, we've just been very selective with okay. that. We're just not trying to put any show yeah. together. And um, That's smart. We definitely got, um, we got July 4th. We'll be actually going out to, uh, and this is something that we have right before the COVID. Some of these dates are kind of coming back through. Okay. Us. Um, so we have Fort Hood. So we'll go out to the military base. And, uh, and that's probably about an hour and a half north of Austin for us. So Fort okay. Hood, we'll be out there doing 4th of July, playing for the military and uh, giving back. You know, they give so much for us. So, you know, we, you know, this is just our little bit to help you get back to them, man. You know, That's really cool. Salon. Yeah. So, so you had, w- sorry, go on. Is there more, more shows? There, there, there's a few things. Um, you know, Rob's going to be trying to do uh, Illinois State Fair, and that's going to be in August. And then the next uh, New Mexico State Fair um, in September. So. Okay. Nothing in Phoenix though yet, huh? Nothing to finish. Damn it. Now, so. Okay. Well, keep yeah. me posted. <laughs> We're trying. Yeah. So you've had, um, this is cool that you had like saliva and some other bands or very well-known artists. They like your p- Instagram pics or they follow you. Like you guys had the disturbed bassist that he came to see, see a show. Explain what that's like. Cause it's one thing to do a show like with slash and you just have a short interaction, but these are people that are actually like there to watch your show. I mean, that's got to feel pretty good. Right. For sure, man. Uh, yeah, I mean, John Moyer, uh, like I said, I mean, he lives in Austin with us and stuff. And um, he actually works at, you know, he goes back and forth uh, with the studio that we uh, record at. So uh, we get a chance to run into him every once in a while. Him, him and my producer will be working on, on some projects together. Um, so, yeah, so we get to run into him and, and it's great, man. I mean, he, he's, you know, he's always been kind and, uh, and again, lend us some some information that he can. I mean, uh, I think the biggest thing is that, you know, we're all in this in this dang boat together and we're just mm-hmm. trying to figure out how to get there. I don't think anybody really knows, yeah. um, you know, on, on what to do nowadays. So yeah. um, if anything, we're just kind of, you know, we just, we just BS. We just kind of hang out and we just talk. Hey, how's, how's the family? How you doing? Yeah. You know, what's your favorite ice cream? Stuff no, that's like smart. That, you know? Networking. <laughs> so, and speaking of networking with other bands, um, I've had a lot of the great newer kind of bands on, I would call you guys kind of a newer band, right? And some of the other yeah. newer bands that I've had on my show, like I've had the Black Moods, Them Evils, Joyous Wolf, Of Limbo, Moon Fever, Goodbye June, Blacktop Mojo, the, this band, The Issue. Uh, what are other up and coming, up and coming like newer bands that you think are the future of rock? There's got to be a lot in Austin because that's a huge music scene. Yeah, well, I mean, Austin brings a, a lot of things. So um, there's definitely a couple. I'll give you some Texas, you know, bands. Like I said, we got to support the Texas boys. Um, from Austin, we have uh, Empty Trail. Um, they're a cool progressive rock band that that's doing, you know, big stuff. Um, um, we got uh, from San Antonio, we got Jason Kane and the Jive, which is a cool uh, take on a '70s rock. It's a, it's a younger band as well, and uh, and they're doing really cool stuff and. Uh, you know, Jason got this really cool, sweet little mustache, Hannah Bar thing. You got okay. Like I'll yeah, have to yeah, check these yeah, guys yeah. out. I love discovering yeah. new music. So there's more. Yeah, man. Yeah. There, there's, we got Odd Fellows from. Uh, oh, I've heard of them. Just with, yeah, man. So they're, they're, they're great guys, too. And, uh, and then from Houston, you got the boys, uh, Hold On Hollywood. They're doing big stuff. So, uh, like I said, these are just guys we, we see on the road, you know, often because, you know, we're all kind of working the same home base. And oh, stuff, that's and, cool. Uh, and they're all great guys, man. You yeah. Know? And like, they're all trying dude. And, and you know, you got to give love to where, where love is, is due, you know? Absolutely. So you did some, you've done some solo shows. What is the, your future with your solo career? Are you going to continue to work on that while you do Blackheart Saints or is that kind of on hold right now? Uh, I mean, I mean, never know what the future holds, man. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but I definitely love, you know, Black Heart Saints, and I think there's a lot of work that needs to be done. So, uh, I mean, obviously that's where the focus is, you know, yeah. and um, we're all trying to do this full time and, and everything. And uh, we're all pretty fortunate to be able to kind of pretty much do that. So, um, I mean, I got other projects, other little pet projects where, you know, we're doing the Led Zeppelin tribute. Um, yeah, I was going to ask you about that. that. You've done that multiple times. How fun is that you do? And is that more lucrative than doing the originals at this juncture? Cause I, there's definitely a higher ceiling with the originals. 
um, you know, in five years, if you're, you, you know, you can only go so far as a cover band, but in terms of like right now, do you make, can you make more doing the cover band stuff? Cause that's got to bring in a, a big crowd. For sure. And then that's kind of where that pivot is, is like, you know, um, being able to try to, to fit both of them in because obviously one's helping the other. And uh, like I so said, we're not trying to expect much money off the Black Heart Saints deal. I mean, it's, it's we're, we're building we're building this thing up, and, and Rogue is going to be an empire uh, at some point. Love it. Uh, while still being being available, you know. So uh, Led Zeppelin's, are, you know, funny enough, it's it's one of those good tools. And the guys I've played with, uh, they all kind of have their side projects. So the the game plan for it is is just that. Hey, mm -hmm. let's do this. Uh, we're pretty good at it. Uh, maybe it can make us a little bit of money. So then we have all this time to be able to kind of focus towards the, our, our, our primary goals, which is yeah. you know, our, our, our projects. That's um, smart. Like said, yeah. yeah, man. You have some other, funds. Yeah, you have some other projects you guys did. You did like a photo shoot um, for some print ads and you did a, you guys did a commercial and then you have a beer at a brewery? The Black we do, man. Blackheart Stout? Yeah. How can I That's get that? Right. Can I? Do I have to come to Austin to get that or can I order that or something? <laughs> We'll, we'll, we'll have to talk after the podcast. Okay. Might, might, be, might be able to slide <laughs> something out there. Nice. Uh, yeah, man. We, we, we both, you know, we're looking for, you know, you got to try new things, man. And that's kind yes. of what, what we're about. You know what I'm saying? I and, agree. Uh, definitely with the COVID thing, it was, I think it's a rude awakening for, for everybody where we're like, man, our jobs can be going like that. Like, yeah. Without any say so, without any, any way to change that, like, we need to figure out other ways to kind of make this uh, successful and, and just kind of have these plates turn. And, and no, that's sort of really like smart. Yeah. Cause I know like the black moods are like the Phoenix band and they have their own wine. And I think they just, they have, a, I think they have a red one and now they're doing a white one. And I think, I think a lot of bands, don't you guys make more money off like the merch and like, you know, wines and beers and things like that? Because I mean, you just can't, you're not going to make as much off selling records or whatever. I mean, so it's either the live shows or the merch. For sure. Yeah. I mean, and, and kind of like, uh, I mean, I saw the, the podcast with, with Matt and, and like he's saying, I mean, uh, you can't really, we all need to be on Spotify and, and the Apple mm -hmm. play and stuff. And, and that's, that's good to get us out there and stuff. But, uh, even with all those, those plays and everything, I mean, that's not the same as it was back in the day when there was, no, and but what it's, yeah. Out. But what it does is it makes it, uh, it, it generates a fan base. Cause I, I mean, I, absolutely. I heard your song misery and I was immediately, I'm like, dude, I'm in, I'm, I'm sign me up. I'm a fan. And now I'm, like I said, I'm discovering your back catalog and I'm like, you guys have a lot of great songs. So I'm excited to see mm -hmm. you live. I'll buy a shirt or a beer or whatever you guys have selling. And <laughs> uh, it's great. I love it. Um, Hell yeah, man. so speaking of money, what are your thoughts on pay to play are you a fan of that or do you think it's okay to do it sometimes or do you say because some bands have a strict like i will not do pay to play sure man I, I, you know i think you depends on what you're looking for in life man you know i mean you either you either play the game or you don't play the game and i think there's times to do it i think there's times not to do it mm -hmm. uh as you said i mean you know yeah you're gonna make your money off of merch so mm. if you're able to to to, to pay to be part of a, a big enough tour where you know that okay well x amount of money but if i'm making all these merch sales because these shows are packed out and i'm on that tour and i'm able to build that that resume then uh well then there's no questions asked it's more about numbers and more about mm -hmm. you know uh the opportunity yeah and building um, a fan base and thinking long term right because if you go on that tour with the pay to play and you travel along the country and you're building fans then you come back on your own if you've built fans then they'll come and see you Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, like I said, I mean, it definitely would have to be a band that, you know, you know, is, is bringing, bringing people and, uh, you know, definitely don't go uh, pay to be on the tour that your other local rock band is putting together. I mean, that I wouldn't, yeah. you're just helping them, you're just helping them do their tour and that doesn't help you in the long run. Right. So, no, no, but uh, yeah, I know there, like definitely yeah. times and place. Yeah, you know? for sure. I know like the black moods here, they, they tour, they did the pay to play to, for white snake. And I'm like, that's pretty oh. cool. Like opening for white snake. Yeah. And it hopefully expose them to, a, a, you know, a lot of people. A huge audience, yeah. Yeah, because I think the thing is, is like there's so much good music out there. But I just think, like like I said, your first album, I had never heard that. And it's like, what, three or four years old? And it's like, how did I not hear these songs? These songs are great. So sometimes you just have to, like you said, play the game to, to expose your music to people. So um, you guys have a stand-up comedy in, there in, in Austin now. Like Joe Rogan moved there. Um, you're you're yeah. a fan of stand-up comedy. Do you ever go see some of the comedians out th down there 
Uh, definitely not yet. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm a fan of definitely comedy, man. I grew up on uh, some some good old uh, com- comic view and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Back in the day when it was on BET and uh, all that good stuff. So, man, I love comedy, man. I love some raunchy stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, with those guys, you know, with Joe Rogan moving in, it seems like uh, Tom S- Segura. Is that right? Tom Segura? Yeah. Is the, the comedian. So I think he's he's about to move out there to Austin as well. Yeah, Fahim uh, Anwar. So- that's another. He's from Seattle, where I'm from. I used to see him all the time. He okay. he moved to Austin. You should check him out. He's been on Joe Rogan's podcast a couple times. He's really funny. I highly recommend. I think, where do you guys do comedy? Is it Stubbs? Is that where the comedy is? And that's like also a music venue? It's, well, I think so. Ro- Joe Rogan, I think, just bought um, um, a theater out there, uh, One World Theater or something like that. So oh. I would expect a lot of the big, the bigger shows and stuff. And all those people that have been playing at Stubbs are going to probably start going out there to play, uh, which is a little bit on, I want to say it's probably on the west side. Okay. Uh, so it's a little bit, it's a little bit out of downtown area. Downtown's been getting a little sketchy and stuff, but, um, mm. but yeah, I mean, right now Stubbs, uh, Vulcan gas company, um, was actually, uh, like an EDM, uh, venue, but I think they've been doing a lot more, um, okay. comic shows as well as Anton's. I think it's starting to host a few, uh, comic shows. So. Okay, cool. Yeah. Tell me this story that, that someone had kind of reached out to you because they were suicidal at a show and you, you kind of pulled them over to the merch table and you, you kind of helped this guy out. What, what was the story with this? Uh, so yeah, man, who were we playing with? I think it was, um, I can't even think exactly who it was, but it was, it was a bigger show that we were playing. And, um, and this young guy, man, um, you, I, he obviously had, had a disability of some sort. Mm. Um, and he was just going through some stuff, man. And, and I, I, I had no idea, you know, of what was going on, but he, he just came up to the table and he wanted to get something. Um, but I don't think he had any money or anything, but he was just kind of looking around and stuff. So we just kind of, Hey, how's it going? And everything like that. Um, and then once I kind of started to talk to him and kind of get his story and everything, um, he started to kind of tell me about a breakup and stuff and, and uh, how I think one of the songs uh, kind of, touched him in some way and, and he was just trying to deal with this and um he just was head over heels for this girl and and just didn't uh know how to handle it. and he was young I mean he was probably 18 so it was an all ages show um and he just was you know asking for advice like hey you know how do I how do I handle these mm-hmm. emotions and stuff and uh and man I just for some reason I don't know why but it just it just hit me that I need to just talk to this guy you know and just kind of give him my full attention and uh and hopefully give him some kind of good advice and and i I think it did i mean uh, he's a fan i see him liking some of the posts nowadays and uh so i know everything's good you know that's awesome right that's really cool shirt and stuff like that so oh that's uh, great bring him bring him into the family bring him yeah man like i said we're just we're just some regular guys bro just trying to play rock and roll and uh and have a good time, man, and, and, and give people a good time as well. That's awesome. Well, I think you make the world a better place by helping people like that, but also just by playing music. I think that helps a lot of people um, in general just help, like you said, get out your their aggressions or their feelings or emotions or whatever. So um, and in terms of making the world a better place, is there a charity that you like to support or have people donate to if they have a few bucks lying around? Uh, sure, man. Uh, the one that, that we kind of stick to is a uh, health Alliance for awesome musicians. And, uh, okay. they're very special to awesome musicians, man. Uh, they give us healthcare, you know, and, and they don't ask for a penny from us. Uh, wow. you know, they go, it's an organization that's, you know, if, if you're from Austin and, and you can show that you're actively in, in a band and you're trying to do something because a lot of those guys are gig workers, you know, and they work day to day and they're, you know, they're living off of $50 a gig and doing it six, seven times a week, you know? So, um, as well as trying to live in a very expensive city. So this is something that the city, um, or I guess this organization has put together uh, to help the awesome musicians. What's it uh, called again? With the Health Alliance for Austin Musicians. Okay, I will put that in the notes so if people can throw that a few bucks that way, that'd be good. And I'll also put in the uh, your website and people can follow you on, on the social medias and all that stuff. Uh, this has cool. been amazing. I, I, uh, I look forward to seeing you guys live at some point. So... Uh, we'll say goodbye to the audience. And then if you want to stick around, we can talk about that uh, beer. <laughs> cool. All right. Okay. All right. So goodbye audience. Goodbye.
Thank you to Josh Rosh, Blackheart Saints. Check out their music on Spotify or YouTube or wherever you listen to music. And I think you'll agree these guys have some chops. If you like it, make sure to follow them on social media to keep up with new music and show dates for the band. And follow me on social media as well to keep up with new podcast episodes. And make sure to like, share, and comment. That will help the show grow. I can't grow without you guys, so I want you to know I really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Um, I've seen a lot of growth from the show recently, and it's just really cool to see. I'm glad other people enjoy it because I enjoy doing it so much. It's the ultimate high to see when other people are enjoying it as well. So thank you again. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. And remember, shoot for the moon.